Hello everyone and welcome back to trying to get the shuttle to the moon in Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and once again we are going to try to get it to Mir which is currently in a polarish orbit around the moon and yeah I've made a few changes which I'll discuss as it goes along its way but let me just edit the launch script which I changed some things on so that it'll uh, shut down in a more appropriate way to this mission because we're not we're, we're gonna be dumping the external tank way ahead of uh, where it normally would so because we're using BE3U's to complete orbit so the whole business of how it ends up in orbit is a little bit different and I changed that so anyway um, there we go We shuffled some engines around. I put more on these tanks over here and fewer at the bottom here. Mainly because, well, we're shutting them off anyway, so we might as well get rid of them earlier. We, there's no reason for them to hang out. Uh, these tanks are now slightly larger. Uh, only a little bit larger. And I also put a lead weight up here. <laughs> it's, it's the worst thing to do, but it's a three ton lead weight that will help us to maintain balance. Basically, that allows me to dump this engine cluster earlier instead of having it drain until it's uh, until the external tank is also drained, which was what I was attempting to do last time. So, in order to be able to dump that off and do everything a little bit smoother, I put the lead weight up there. Three tons. We'll see whether it's an improvement. You can see the balance is better right now because we moved those engines over here as well. So it's seven engines on each of these. They're Raptor engines still and just four on the bottom here. Still there's cross feeding between these tanks and this tank here. I adjusted the timings a bit of course because once you move the engines when to shut them down changes. I also decided not to throttle down as much as we were doing before. It'll still throttle down here soon. Right there. But it's not as uh, deeply as it was before because uh, throttling down all the Raptor engines as well is a bit much. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, we are go at throttle up and everything is looking good very much in line. I think it's an improvement, but is it enough of an improvement? We need a certain amount of extra delta V after all. And there's no telling whether it's enough. I want to get rid of the hydrazine back here. Um, so I'm going to stop the fuel cells and let the APU produce electricity from the hydrazine. That'll lighten us up a bit. All right, booster separation. So we have engines out, about half of the engines on the opposite side tanks. Don't know what to call them. Okay, getting ready for these to go out. I'll need to stage them off manually once the fuel is done. I could have written something into the script, but I didn't. You can see the pitch is maxed out there. So it's the right timing. And we're back to normal on pitch. And this, uh, these four engines are on this tank, and they're not going to shut down. It's just uh, all four are going to burn for the remainder. And we're going to rely on that little lead block to keep balance after this goes out. We I tried potentially tilting these engines to help. You can see they're, they're sort of still tilted a little bit, though some of it's gimbling. But, um, yep. Yeah, I decided I'd rather just get rid of this tank and the mass of the engines sooner rather than later. Okay, we have BE3U ignition. It's possible I could delay that just a little bit longer. 
that would help because the RS-25s do have somewhat better efficiency. Not a huge amount, but somewhat better. Like, uh, seven seconds of ISP. Okay... And off go the remaining Raptors. Now we're just with the external tank again. Oh, this is reversed. So we'll see how much we actually manage to drain before it gets imbalanced. Now uh, turn RCS on, it might help keeping balance. Being a bit maxed out there. Uh, okay, that's probably all we can do. Okay, and separation. Separation. Uh, don't knock it, don't knock it. Okay, well, not quite all drained, but it's the best we can do right now. It should hand off control to me once we are good enough on the periapsis to do an OMS burn to finish. I don't think it's doing a good job of pitching down enough right now. Our apoapsis is getting a bit high. So I might cancel this a little bit early. Okay. Let's shut down the BE3Us, activate the OMS engines, and we'll get closer to apoapsis and then burn. But once again, we have limited burns on the BE3Us, so we got to watch out for that. The OMS engines we can use as much as we like. Um, they have 500 ignitions, but the BE3Us, only four left. I must not forget to turn on the fuel cells, though. We're running on the APU right now, but it is vitally important that we switch back to the fuel cells after I drain that hydrazine. Okay, well, that's a good enough starter orbit there. Uh, so now let me plot for the moon. Okay, I think we'll do this sort of approach first, uh, do the mid-course adjustment and work from there, similar to last time. 41 minutes. That burn time is obviously wrong. We'll reactivate the BE3Us. It's still not going to be honest about the burn time. Okay, that's fine. How long is it going to take to do this bit? So a little bit more than five minutes is what we need before the node. We'll keep some hydrazine, I guess, just for show. So let me start the fuel cells and ignition. All right, on to the moon again. Okay, coming out of time warp, physical time warp, in order to dump the soon to be empty tanks here. Okay, off they go. Successful switch over. You can open the cargo bay now for the radiators. If this was just a normal orbit around the moon, it'd be no problem. We need 800 to make orbit around the moon. After this burn, we'll have 1,100 just with the BE3Us, not including the RCS slash OMS system. But it's not a normal orbit around the moon, so it's all complicated. Okay, kill rotation and shut down. Okay, well, RCS back on. We've still got a horrendous inclination difference to deal with once we get there. Same pattern as last time. Okay, that's getting a little bit further away. Let's do a mid-course adjustment. Well, uh, that's a safe periapsis, okay. 308 there. Uh, that sounds okay-ish.
302, 308, that's 670, 500 left to do. Maybe. Okay. It's really about management, fuel management, and how much the burn after that's going to take, I don't know. Actually, we need to compensate for the OMS thrusters being off. Is that the right direction? Maybe. Well, actually, maybe I can just RCS it. Okay, we've entered Lunar SOI. Now, can I create a maneuver node? I'm trying to figure out when the best time is to capture. I think it's actually past periapsis. So we capture in a very loose orbit. Well, that's close to three day apoapsis. We still got. Well, water is being made by the fuel cells, so the problem is oxygen, 14 days. So the first burn is 284. This one's 357, so that seems better. And that'll get us a good inclination with respect to Mir. Hopefully I'm, yeah, I'm still targeting Mir. And that's a good periapsis. Okay, so uh, we're gonna do the burn past periapsis in order to help things along. All right. But it still has to be done with the BE3Us because that's too much for the OMS engines right now. Okay, Earth is there. Up oh, there's the moon. Lunar landscape looking good. Okay, uh, let's switch off OMS engines. Prepare to be E3Us. Not going to take very long to do this burn. Probably have to throttle down for it. Okay, ignition. We have captured. Oh, okay. Just trying to keep it as loose as possible so the descending node is as high as possible. We could probably even uh, leave the apoapsis on escape since we're hitting the descending node ahead of it and we're going to be retro burning as part of that. This is a combination normal and retro. I think that's about all. I'll push it. Let me see if that's okay. That's enough for us. You see, as we retro here as part of this burn, brings the apoapsis in anyway. Okay, seems a bit complicated right now. Um, we'll do this part first, 356.8 meters per second in 10 hours. But yeah, I'm not sure whether we have enough or not, so... <laughs> Big question mark. I'm gonna make sure to lock the... Oh, we emptied the fuel cell fuel. The fuel cell fuel is built into the body of this. And so I'm gonna pump some back into there and lock it so that when we run the engine, just in case, we're not gonna end up losing that. We don't need all of it, but... That's a few days worth, probably. About half. All right. Really far out from the moon. Okay. Ignition. Whoa, flipped around because we're temporarily suborbital. Okay. Take that for now. Let's see, uh, pretty close. Okay, so that should be a tangency or close enough. Let's see now. 
Let's just pull it all the way down and see how much that costs. Well, that's matching orbits, so it's within our capabilities, but barely. So we have to be careful here. I mean, docking with the shuttle is not wonderful at the best of times. One point four kilometers. That sums up to six hundred. <laughs> hmm. I guess we'll go with this combination. Okay. Let me turn it manually a bit. Okay, selling the fuel down. And ignition. Okay, let me do the rest with RCS. Up. A little bit more than we were planning. Alright, well, we'll take that for now. Okay, so that's 3.1, and we'll have 166 meters per second to do when we get there. That leaves us with 30. Okay, well, I wonder how much we could. Well, I mean, we are imbalanced on the fuel cell fuel there right now, anyway. Um, so this is such a big tank. All right, so let's dump all of it in here and then rebalance in here. We just need a little bit of time. Oh, no, that's too much. Okay, in. That gives us 10 meters per second more, I guess. Uh, well, it's something. Okay, so first uh, we'll have the remaining EE3 fuel. Oh, no, en no ignitions remaining. I did not use all the ignitions. Ah. Uh, all right, well, well, we'll just dump that. And let's see if we have some. Okay, well, just, yeah, that's not enough. <laughs> just barely not enough. Let me see if I dump the hydrazine completely. Well, still not enough. Oh, this is okay so far. Uh, probably should have started a little bit earlier, though. Oh, it's going off. But anyway, basically we were close but no cigar. The relative velocity would be 56 or something and we need 59 so we don't have enough anyway. Well, close. We sort of passed by it and we were within a few meters per second of getting a rendezvous. But anyway, so close. I need to eke out the, like 100 meters per second more just for safety's sake. And we can do it, but that's gonna have to wait until next time. The the struggle continues. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.